All right, ready? Here it comes. Well, so much for our picnic. Too bad we couldn't slow that watermelon down so it could land nice and slowly and in one piece. That's the goal NASA is trying to achieve developing the next generation lunar lander. Fortunately, NASA's having more success than we are. Two, one, start. We'll check their progress next on Real World. Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. When NASA last sent crewed missions to the moon, a spacecraft called the Lunar Module dropped astronauts onto the surface. But now, 40 years later, the next generation lunar lander has to go above and beyond that of the Apollo days. NASA wants to develop a rocket engine that can land more payload and will allow for greater flexibility in choosing a landing site for America's next crewed mission to the moon. We can't do everything the way we did it for Apollo. Mark Clem is the project manager for propulsion and cryogenics advanced development. Because we're staying longer, because we're taking more people, we have to have higher performance engines. The Altair lander will have double the crew size of the Apollo lander. Four astronauts instead of two, plus more supplies. So NASA is working on a rocket engine that will allow Altair to set down safely. They, along with engineers at rocket manufacturer Pratt & Whitney Rocketdyne, have developed a technology demonstrator engine used for testing and data collection. It's called the CC. CC stands for Common Extensible Cryogenic Engine. Tony Kim is the Deep Throttling Engine Technology Development Manager. We want it to be common in the fact that we want to be able to utilize the same engine in various applications. And extensible means being able to go beyond the original mission to the future. Cryogenic basically means a very low temperature. So what we're using for fuel is cryogenic fluids, and this happens to be liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen for this engine. The liquid hydrogen is a frigid negative 240 degrees Celsius as it enters the engine, where it is combined with liquid oxygen. The liquid hydrogen that we cool the thrust chamber with is very cold. Randy Lida is the chief engineer for the CC program. So some of the water that condenses out runs down the inside of the thrust chamber, which is very cold. And when it gets to the nozzle exit area, it's, it's allowed to freeze and can actually grow icicles up to a foot long as the engine's running. That's the cool cryogenic part of the process. But at the same time, the engine is firing hot, providing propulsion. The reaction between liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen, once ignited, is a very dynamic um, chemical process and produces a lot of energy. When you burn liquid oxygen and hydrogen, it makes water. Uh, what you see coming out of the back is essentially 5,000 degree steam with some water condensate in it. Basically, if you can think of this rocket as a giant water hose, and it's shooting out water vapor at a high velocity, giving it thrust. NASA wants to control that thrust for use in acceleration, deceleration, and controlling the flight path of Altair. That's the idea behind deep throttling the ability to control the amount of thrust coming out of the engine. NASA wants to be able to lower it to below 10% of the max capacity. Recent tests have shown significant progress. In this test, we throttle the engine between 100% and 10%. Technically, that's considered deep throttling. Uh, deep throttling is anything on the ratio of 5 to 1, which would mean going from 100% to 20%. At 100%, full throttle, the engine is putting out 15,000 pounds of thrust. Deep throttling to 10% can take that down to just 1,500 pounds of thrust. By adjusting the amount of thrust, the craft can control how rapidly it descends to the surface or ascends away from it. The key is the math. The reason we need to throttle them down to low throttle rates is that we need to first lower the vehicle and then we have to hover and find the landing spot and then land. 
So far, engineers like what they see from all this testing. These technology demonstrations are going to be very important as we go forward. Keith Brock is the Deputy Project Manager for Altair. There's a lot of work to be done. We've got a lot to learn and yet a lot of decisions to make ahead of us. So the more that we can get data that helps to fortify decisions that we can make and go forward in the right direction, this is a really good thing to do. NASA will take the data and lessons learned from the CC and create the engine that will safely see astronauts to the lunar surface. You can follow that mission at www.nasa.gov.